So it all started 1991, April 21st, when my family was home around 10, 18 p.m. at night. My aunt, who was next door, which in the news article, her name is Mrs. H. She was next door and in her bathroom window looking out the back of her house, she noticed a triangular craft that was just hovering there. So she called my mother, which in the story is Mrs. W, called her and my mother went to the phone in the back of the kitchen, picked up the phone and she told my mother to look out the back window. There was something in the backyard. So she goes, she looks out the back window and she sees this triangular craft with white and blue lights with a big white bright light coming off of it. Then sparks start shooting all out of it and then a white beam of light comes and it shoots directly down towards the ground. After this my mother immediately hangs up the phone and calls the authorities to report that there was a crash. On Sunday, April 21st, 1991, at 10.18 p.m., three women reported seeing something that looked like a helicopter crash in Salem County, New Jersey, not far from the Salem nuclear plant. Although police and rescue squads conducted an extensive air and ground search throughout the night and several hours into the next day, no trace of a helicopter crash site could be found. No helicopters were subsequently reported missing. A number of unusual things about the description of the helicopter, such as the absence of sound and a burst of light shooting to the ground, suggest that the object that was observed may have not been a helicopter, but a UFO. In addition, one of the women reported strange reoccurring dreams prior to the incident. The incident is being pursued as a possible abduction event with the helicopter crash staged as a screen memory. Bud Hopkins has been contacted about the event. Although the names and witnesses were published in the local newspaper, the police and all the UFO investigators to date have treated the event as a mysterious helicopter crash and any allegations that this represents a UFO abduction event should be made in only the context of such being a remote possibility. The witnesses do not want any more local publicity, therefore the Chronicle should use the names Mrs. H, Mrs. W, and Mrs. E. Mrs. H, 38, says she was in her bathroom at 10.22 p.m. Sunday night, April 21st, when she saw what she thought was a helicopter in distress. According to the report she gave to the Salem County newspaper, Today's Sunbeam, she looked out the window and in the woods could see sparks low over the woods. I called to my one neighbor and she said she saw the flames and it went down to the ground. The neighbor was Mrs. W. 22. The alleged crash and called police. Mrs. W. told the newspaper Roberta called here and asked me if I saw the helicopter and I did. I looked out my kitchen window facing Newbridge Road and saw sparks as it looked like it was coming towards our houses. As I kept on watching, I saw fire shooting out the side of it and then a big ball of fire and it fell, she said. After the crash, I hung up on Roberta and called the police. Mrs. E was also present in the home of Mrs. W and also witnessed the events. She reported she was sitting down watching TV when Mrs. W said, Oh my God, she came running and saw sparks, then the helicopter exploded and fell. Neither of the three witnesses reported hearing any sound. According to both witnesses, it was raining at the time of the incident. The object was described as solid in appearance, helicopter shaped with white and blue lights at first, with a shower of red and orange sparks followed by a bright flash to the ground. The police log shows Mrs. W called the police at 10.18 p.m. Police and rescue squads were on the scene immediately after she called the police. Mrs. W says she spent part of the night on the phone talking to one of the pilots in the rescue helicopters as it was dispatched to the area trying to tell him exactly where it was she saw the crash while he flew overhead. Assisting in the search was Lower Alloways Creek Fire Department. Fire Chief Calvin Hill contacted the Federal Aviation Agency but learned that there were no reports of any late or missing aircraft in the area. 
The fire chief contacted local airports in Salem and in Wilmington, Delaware, which did not report any missing aircraft. There was no information from FAA flight logs that would have suggested that an aircraft was flying over the area at the time of the crash. The incident was also reported on the late night news by Channel 3 News Philadelphia TV station videotaped uh, the coverage. The search began at 10.30 p.m. Sunday in a wooded area in Beasley Neck Road. My neighbor, Scott A. George of Crossroad, told police he thought he heard a crash but just assumed it was a gust of wind. According to police, there were two independent callers. Police took the two-caller report seriously and are not looking into the possibility of a false report. No, I don't feel like it was a prank call, a police spokesperson said. We received two different calls from different people. They were both reputable adults and I don't have any doubt that they have said anything that was misleading. The police spokesman speculated that because the area was so densely wooded, a helicopter could have disappeared from view. However, MUFON investigator Richard Butler, after visiting the homes of the witnesses, disagrees with the characterization of the area being densely wooded and disputes the notion that the crash helicopter would be difficult to find in the area. Three rescue helicopters combed the rain-swept area along the Delaware River Sunday night and Monday morning while boats searched the water. The Delaware River is approximately five miles away from the homes of the witnesses. State police with Trenton Station said a helicopter using infrared scopes searched the coastal region using grids but came up empty. Rescuers called off the search at 3.30 a.m. Monday, having found no trace of a crash, but resumed the search again at 8 a.m. The search officially ended at approximately 10.15 a.m. Monday. But hearing stories throughout my childhood and my mother telling me what she witnessed and after talking to my aunt who also witnessed this, it was not a helicopter, it was a triangle. They did not want to say this because they knew all the attention that saying it was a UFO would cause and they wanted to remain anonymous. Michael Talpas, who talked to the police, at least two other people who were driving in their cars, called in to report sighting the helicopter. While some have speculated that a possible meteor might have fallen in the area, police are not speculating. Mrs. H estimated that the event lasted 20 seconds, which would place it within the range of duration of the meteor. Both Mrs. W and Mrs. E estimated that the event lasted three minutes, but there's no way to check on the accuracy of their estimates. It would have been long enough for Mrs. H to walk to the phone, call her neighbor, have her look for it, and spot it in the sky before it crashed. One of the younger women, Mrs. W, reported an unusual dream on Friday night preceding the event. She reported that during the previous week she was late getting her period and took a pregnancy test which was negative. From Monday through Thursday she reported waking up excited, nervous, and anxious. That Friday night her and her husband were out late at a party and returned home to be around 4.15 a.m. She dreamed she was walking out of the house to a half-wooded area where she encountered three to four giant hamster cages with bright red and orange twist ties on the bars of the cages about halfway up. Out of the bottom of the cages came gray and white mongooses who walked erect. They walked in step in coordinated movement and began chasing her around. There were also two large snakes in her dream and she felt she was protecting the snakes from the mongooses. She reports that she's never really seen a mongoose and didn't know exactly what they looked like. Richard Butler regards the dream as a scream memory of an actual abduction experience with the giant hamster cages actually being UFOs with lights around the rims and mongooses with the peculiar albino coloring actually gray humanoid. It's all interesting speculation at this point, but she's agreed to explore the dream father, presumably through hypnosis. Weather reports obtained by Bob Durant from Philadelphia International Airport has shown that the cloud layer at the time was scattered clouds between 1,100 feet and 1,200 feet and overcast clouds at 2,000 feet. 
A light rain was falling at the time. This makes a meteor explanation very unlikely. There are no power lines in the vicinity, according to maps on site inspection by Michael Talpas. Not far from where that incident happened, you can see the Salem nuclear plant. I believe that these beings and these crafts are attracted to man-made energy or natural energy. There has been several cases of this shown throughout the years of research. In this area here, about two days after my grandmother, who always came down here, was riding on her bicycle, and right in this location here, she saw probably a 25 foot, 30 foot circumference of all the reeds that were laid down. She didn't think anything of it at the time and thought it could have even been possibly from the search and rescue teams. But after looking back, I find it very strange because after talking to my aunt, she told me when MUFON investigators went there, they found markings and traces of what they believed to be evidence that a craft was there in her backyard behind her shed. What those markings are, I do not know. And this story is currently trying to be reopened within MUFON. I have contacted them and I'm waiting for a response to get more information about my case. Here is a satellite image of where the incident happened. As you can see in white is my house and my aunt's house. My house is farther to the right. And there is a pretty clear view, not that many trees. As you can see, there's a straight little path, not that thick. And from my house, it was very easy to view. The UFO crash site in red is where my grandmother saw the crop circles and it's close to the arrow where they had it pointing at on the map in the article. Except in the article the arrow is pointing a little north of the bridge but that is dry flat land and they would have saw something if it crashed there. Where I have the UFO crash site there's a lot of marsh, a lot of swamp, a lot of mud, and a lot of foxtails so I just marked that out but it shows you from this aerial view that it would have definitely been easy to witness. So I am doing this so this story won't just be a PDF on the internet. I want this to be in the social media platform. I want it to be shared. I spent many years looking for an article or evidence to even say that anything happened at all. After all of this time, I finally found this article. Unfortunately, this article came a little too late because my mother, who always wanted people to believe her, searched and looked for something to validate her claims and never found it. She passed away not too long ago. So I'm doing this to honor her memory because her love and her compassion was truly out of this world. I believe that more people should know this story and hopes with giving this on the internet and on YouTube and Facebook, other people may be able to share their stories. To be able to come out and talk about these things without being judged or laughed at or harassed. This is a complex story with many layers. And in part two, I hope to dive more into the abduction case. And in part three, I will go into how this has impacted my life and what experiences I have encountered through all of this. I was there and for a three and a half year old child, it was unbearable trying to mentally handle what my family had witnessed. But I learned to live with it. And this is my story. Thank you so much for watching. Please email me with any questions.